Hello, hello. Uh, good morning. Um, wait, is it night? It's it's daylight, bright, shine. Um, yeah, I was tweaking about all the cameras for a while, so I'm not really sure. Uh, I think I get this this right angle. I guess this is better. Hopefully, um, man. Uh, sorry. Let me let me try and take a look at the stream on YouTube right now because I'm not really sure how I'm look like at the stream. Wait a minute. Where's the stream? Uh, I see comments. I guess that's great. Uh, Sorry. Hello, Jesse. Brad, Jesse, Octavia. Hi, hi. Great. I think it's doing good. So, welcome to my stream. It's, I'm calling it a Svelte weekend live stream because we're trying to do this on a weekend, on a weekly basis. Um, hold on. Let me grab my stuff over here. So, I just came back from the Svelte Summit in Stockholm a week ago. It's a week? Yeah, time flies. And I find that it's so interesting that there's so many excited people about Svelte. And I think that I need to up my game on making content about Svelte. I realized that, um, yeah, I sometimes I upload quite a bit. And then after a while, I'm just... Um, too busy with other things about my life and then I just drop out, uh, stop uploading for a week. I guess you noticed that probably for the past three weeks, I don't have really much content. So I'm like, ah, I need something to push me to make some good regular content. I mean, not good, but at least like regular. I think a regular pacing of content will probably get more people to, you know, regular sub. To all my subscribers so that you know that you can see me in a regular basis. So at least you have something to look forward over the weekends to tune in and check out my content so that you know um so that YouTube sees me as a active um, creator so that it pushes my content more often. So I decided to do like a live stream every week. Um but what should I talk about what is in the live stream? What should I create? Well, I have this crazy idea. So let me share my screen. Share screen. So I think most of us, when we talk about Svelte and how we get onto, got onto Svelte is we watch this amazing, amazing talk from Rich Harris called Rethinking Reactivity. I'm not sure if I play, you can hear this audio over here. But during this talk, at the very, very early of this talk, um, Rich talked about forward referencing on, and in this, and he showed an example, I think, let me, basically he showed this as, this amazing example of referencing and reactive programming using spreadsheets. And I was thinking that, hey, I mean, why not make a Google Sheet clone kind of thing? It will be a cool project. It will be a, a huge project because if you look at here, if I go to Google Sheet, it's, it has so many things over here, so many things going around. Uh, I mean, be beyond like the normal Google Sheet cells that you can type something and uh, have some formatting. Oh, whoops. Oops. Something like this over here. Uh, you have reactivity. Probably we can do this with some sort of like, I don't know, stars. Um, so I was thinking, I probably do something like this with stars. I guess it's it's kind of interesting setup. There's a lot of things to to play around with here, and also this layout. You see, you can have different sheets, and with all this interesting like UX, like a drop-down menu, 
and then open and stuff like that. I guess we can basically ex break this down, explore piece by piece. On every week, there will be good uh, source of ideas of what to make of a Svelte video uh, for like a weekly basis, right? I think it will take us, I don't know, months, quarters, or maybe even years to just build this every week and um, regular... I think every week we're just going to spend two, two hours to work on this. And then throughout the week, I'll probably think about, okay, um, maybe like what should I, which, which part should I work on and how or what are the things that I need to know about or do some research on it, probably a light research. So the idea of this stream is try to be more um, realistic, which is I'm not going to do like a deep research on before I start any. Uh, on, on this stream. So we will basically try to, you know, in, um, I hope that maybe we can interact together. Uh, we can work on together where I will work, I will probably come on to this stream and try to work on this project with little to, like very little research on this uh, thing that we're going to work on, like how to write the next part of this code and uh, basically be realistic in terms of like actually thinking about how to actually uh, structure and think and write this and probably in this way I can give you like um, share with you my top process on how um, yeah how how I'm thinking about this project and how I'm trying to make it happen right um, hope that sounds interesting um, enough I see more people coming on. I see Brad Wilson, Raven. Hello. Hello, hello. Okay. So um, um, enough about me blabbering of all this. Let me try and set this up. Right. Um, so I know that there's a lot of things happening with CellKit now. And to be honest, um, probably you are more updated than me about all these new spell kit changes. Well, let's let's try and start a new spell kit app. And usually, you always have this you know, a homepage. This is amazing. I mean, just copy this and just run this in your terminal. Run this in your terminal, and you get started with the latest spell kit. So I in my projects folder here. Let me zoom in up a bit. Let me try to zoom everything so that's. Nice and clear for everyone. I'm gonna create a new Svelte Kit project with, should I call it my Google Sheet Sheet uh, Svelte Sheet Cone? No, I don't. Know that. I think for any Svelte projects, it's always interesting to figure out where to put in the SV in this thing, like Sheet, or is it Svit, or maybe Shevet, just Svet. Okay, I'm going to just call it Shizvet. <laughs> Hello, Script Raccoon and Roberto Carvalan, if I pronounce your name correctly. Hello, hello. Okay, uh, I mean, yes. A skeleton project. TypeScript. Yes, yes, Lin. Yes, Prettier. Yes, testing. Shizvet. npm install, npm install, and yep, when I install, and we're gonna start our project, and I will try to make this as part of the Git. Push this to my GitHub. Um, I think in the meantime, wow. <laughs> Screw you, couldn't you stay up for so late? Oh my god. Uh, let me wait. Let me try to create a new project. Show my GitHub. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this is how you set up a project. <laughs> I guess I don't have to teach. Uh, I guess you guys probably may know better than me, but yeah, this is how you create a Git repository on GitHub. You go create new repository. And you just click create. At the same time, man, what is this? 
Oh, okay. Use. Do I even have? Oh, my note is too old. Oh, no. Okay. This is. This is not great. <laughs> As my first. Uh, for, for my first stream, this is not great. I don't have. Uh, I need to upgrade my node version. Oh, no. Okay. Well, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to go to node, uh, download the latest node version. In the meantime, I'm going to start a VS code. Okay, you can see it clearly. Um, wow, Brad, you are amazing. Uh, you need sleep after this. Okay, so um, some logistics. I think probably this stream will be going on about for maybe like two hours-ish. So we're going to end in the 11 a.m. in like Singapore time so that we don't drag too long. And I think two hours roughly it's, it's enough for us to set up, write something, at least have something nice. And for people who are tuning in from Europe, here's my plan, right? Um, I know it's, it's late at night at your time. And sorry, I think I have. Let me click on this while, while talk, uh, so that we can have it in the meantime. Whoops, passwords. So let me hide it. So here's my thing, right? So I know it's midnight in your time, but it's like probably night, early night in the American time. So, and it's early morning on my time. So I just woke up and then I was like, oh, okay, now I do live stream, right? So I think Europe, Asia, and America, we are in this triangle where it's very hard for us to it's it's the is that is that triangle that you can't get three out of three, you can only choose two. Right? So if the America and the Europe is wide awake, then I probably it will be in my midnight. And so here's my plan. I'm gonna try I'm thinking about having this as a regular stream, but not at the same timing, right? I'm not I think like having it in this like at this time, then it will be uh it will be disappointing to my European subscribers. So I'm thinking maybe I can do this in um, like 3 a.m. in the Central European time, which is I think 9 p.m. in American time, which is 9 a.m. over here, which is great for us and America. And maybe next week I'll try to have the same, roughly the same day, maybe Saturday, maybe it's like a Saturday morning for the European people and like Friday night, late midnight, uh, which is probably will be maybe like a 9 a.m. in Europe, 3 p.m. over my over here, and like 3 a.m. in America, so that people from the Europe can tune in in a Saturday morning, right? Something like that. Then at least we can switch up a bit, and at least you know take turns to uh, watch live stream and maybe burn the midnight oil for us some of you, right? So this is probably my plan, okay? Um, yeah, I, I do understand that it's, it's tough to have everyone to be wide awake at the same time across a group, right? But this is, this is my plan. So I think I've installed that and let me try to probably npm install. Um, at the same time, I'm going to try this. Uh, I'm not sure if any one uh, of you have used the live share before, right? So VS Code live share. Um, so this is an extension that you can install in live share extension. This is an extension that you can install in your VS Code. What this does is that it will. Um, what this does is that it will allows you to join in in a live manner 
in the VS Code. All right, so uh, make read only. So what I'm going to do is you can install the instruction extension in the if you have. You have not have this extension. You can look at that link and then click on it and install that extension. And then the second link here, um, join. Hold on, how do I invite participant? Join. And the second link that I'm going to share over here is to allow you to join in to my live share session in my VS Code, so that. Um, you not only just look at the screen and um, and basically see where I'm going at, you can also have your another screen or like maybe on your VS Code window, you can actually see the code uh, that I have in, in real time where you can navigate to different files if you're interested because I mean, I can only sh share one tab at a time, at most two and it's, it's quite small. But you can take your time. Uh, when I was talking, maybe you can take your time to explore around. Um, and if you are like a power user, maybe you can add some discuss, start some discussion somewhere, and maybe like maybe like highlighting this line. Hey, what is this doing? Um, things like that. And I, I've I've never I've never done this really on a live stream kind of. Uh, so, but I've used this with. Colleagues, it it's like a very great tool for you to do like pair-to-pair -pair programming when you are in remote, right? During the COVID lockdown, you do you want to do like a pair programming? Then this is a great extension where you can you don't have to be in the same room at the same time physically. You can live share your code and make the other person um looking at the same thing, right? And yeah, so let me know if you're interested to. Uh, join in and oh okay yeah I see people joining in so and what you can do over here is, this is your live share um a uh, tab for this extension what you could do is that you can click on someone like here if I'm in a solid circle then basically I'm following Nick's cursor so you can you probably will see my cursor somewhere here and then you'll be Wait, am I even in this? How come it's just one? But you can basically follow anyone's cursor and I can control whether anyone of you is like read only or write. And so you don't have to, um, uh, so you, you don't actually change my code, uh, but you can yeah follow me around or uh, yeah look at things like that, right? So we have our thing set up. Right, next thing is that we will uh this is not a git repository, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna git init to set this up. And I mean great thing is that Svelte Kids, the creator, uh the starter will already have a git ignore file that correctly ignores correctly ignores files for me so I can git init to initialize a git project. And I can push this code first. Initial setup. Oops. Everything in commit. Initial setup. And I'm gonna add. I'm gonna add this over here. So here you can copy the remote and whoops. Oops, git uh, remote add up origin push origin. <laughs> so this code is also available on GitHub, right? And yep. So we have all codes everywhere ready for you to, I mean, for all of us to come along, uh, follow this along. Um, so, um, yep, yep. Let me have a sip first. So once everything is, is installed, next thing 
the next thing you want to do is to run dev, right? At the dev server. Okay, immediately you can see welcome to Svelte Kids. Empty project, we have nothing over here. And so now we are going to create our Google Sheets, right? So if you go to Google Sheets, I mean, okay. Uh, let me zoom out a bit. Okay, so here you probably will see this is like the home screen and some templates. And then you're going to click on a sheet. You go to a sheet with a particular ID over here. Right? So basically, if you think about this application, as, as far as what we have seen so far, there's two routes. Right, One is the home page uh, that shows you some template and list of sheets. And then another one would be the actual sheets itself. So here, uh, knowing that, then here in your routes, you probably can create two, two routes, right? So one folder is called the home, and one is called the the detail sheet, right? And and the detail sheet itself, it depends on. I think let's let's kind of roughly copy. Okay, I'm gonna say it's like there's a sheet. And so the URL is like sheet, and then no, we're called shazvet, right? Shazvet, <laughs> uh -huh. and uh, and then like the ID, right? So ID here is dynamic. So here we're gonna call. You can create a parameter, per, parameter, right? So here I'm gonna create a folder, B, and here what's different. Or a recent change is that you need to create a file called page.svelte plus page.svelte. But this is where your, your content will be at. So this is my home. This is my shirt. Uh, and if I come over here, if I go to the home page. This is the home. And if I go to shirt with some ID, then this is the details page. Okay, so um, so this is something that has slightly changed recently. Previously, you can create a file called home dot svelte or or shazvet slash id dot svelte. Now, this thing previously it's it's there's a lot of possibilities to create this home dot svelte uh this home page right. You could be home dot svelte, you could be home dot index dot svelte. Um, I think just two, okay. I mean, you have two possibilities, but, and so it's a bit confusing and it's a bit hard to, it's a bit messy in terms of the code because we have to try, we, we could see both code at the same time and we, we could um, look through the folders and we found these two files and then we have to decide that which one to use and all we will have to warn people that, okay, only one version will be in, in, uh, effect and the other one will be ignored and it's just confusion about what which one to use um, so now I think it's it's slightly simpler where you can have um, sorry and also if you try to search for the files you might have to go to search for maybe home uh, slash uh, home dot svelte and then maybe you can find it or now or not you maybe you have to search for home slash index as well because you're not really sure because these two files could be, it's equally possible to be the routes, um, the routes files, right? The routes components. Now it's it's slightly uh, straightforward where everything, every route file will be with a plus page dot right? Basic. So what it means that is that you can only have one possible component, one possible path to be the routes components. So here, now you can start searching for whatever you are looking for, and then if you plus dot page or svelte, I mean this is this is unique enough that in your search you probably will definitely able to find this file um, uh, in in this quickly search function in VS Code. Right, so here we are in our svelte detail page, and I think. Let's try to write something over here. Um, let's have some script tag. I think 
I think most importantly, let's start to have some layouts, right? Over here in the Google Sheets page, you'll see the layouts. I mean, let's just ignore this tab first, right? Here, we can split this screen into um, three portion, right? You see this first part. I think you can see my cursor. Yeah, I should invest in a way to make my cursor bigger next time so that it's clearer. But you can see that you have three parts, right? One is the top bar. Another, another section is where you have the entire sheets going on where you can edit all the sheet content. And the last part is the un uh, bottom bar where you can choose and open multiple tabs of the sheet. Okay, so to, <laughs> yes, just that. So over here, we are gonna create this layout over here. Um, one, two, three, three different um, content. This is the top bar. This is the bottom bar. This is the sheet. Okay, so today, probably we're gonna make mostly the layouts, I guess. I mean, I'm, I'm bad at estimating how much we can do within two hours. I feel that at best, we probably will be able to finish like a rough layout and maybe a rough input that you can have over here. Um, yeah, that, that's what I envision. And then next one, next week, we probably will... I actually personally like to in explore a bit more on this uh, reactivity in, in Google, Google Sheets where how do we like type in formulas and how do we link that up uh, across tabs where you, when you change something over here, you can immediately flow it over, right? In my mind, I'm thinking probably we can use some sort of stars and derive stars, um, um, but it's not that straightforward, right? I mean, you will have to figure out like derive. I mean, what you derive from is probably dynamic. Right? You can derive from two stars. You could be deriving from like three stars, depending on what you have in your cell. I guess that would be something interesting to figure that out. Um, I'm not sure we can do it this week, but definitely we will explore that in, in the next, uh, this to next week, like the near term. Um, yeah. And so uh, we have this layout style. This and this style. Uh, so the first one is the. I'm not sure about the Tailwind. I personally haven't really tried it. Um, do you think I should try using Tailwind to do this layout and stuff? Or I'm just using plain CSS? Let me know in the comments. And in the meantime, I'm going to continue writing normal plain CSS over here. So this will be, um, this will be a display. I'm going to use grid for most of my layouts because it's, it's, it's cool and it's nice because you can do things like this. Grid templates. Um, I have a template called a, I guess I get mixed response of like tailwind. <laughs> so I guess, um, I guess I'm gonna continue with like plain CSS. Uh, probably you can have like, I mean, display grid, you probably have a dis display grid class, uh, grid class. Um, so probably it's similar. Um, Maybe I would have a mix of different components using some using Tailwind, some not. I guess like everyone has very, very diverse opinions. So templates, right? So if you're using grids, then you can define um, how many columns and how many rows. For example, grid um, called template columns. Right, template columns. In this case, I only have like one column and grid template rows, I'm gonna have three rows, right? We have, like, we have one, two, three. So it will be um, the top one. So I'm gonna make maybe like a fixed height for the top and bottom, and then let the center to be flow by itself, right? So here 
we're gonna have um I don't know two hundred pixels auto and the pixels. Okay, I'm bad at coming out values, but we'll see. Uh, here over here the top bar. I think we need to add some class. The top top sheets, the bottom right sheets and bottom. And to make things obvious, we're gonna have them have a different colors so that at least we can see our layouts. So background color. Uh, the first one I'm gonna use the golden rod yellow. You know, golden rod, yeah. Light golden rod yellow. Next one is gonna uh peach puff. Your papaya. No, papaya whip will be too close. A yellow uh, peach thin color, maybe something Rebecca purple. Okay, so here we have okay, something like this. Uh columns. Oh, I think we need to be as as wide as we are, right? Just like our view width. Um is it working? Man. By that CSS, uh, container. Okay, the width is this rows kind of correct. Uh, maybe this is one fr. No, I need to make my. I think I think I think we can just like one fractional unit to just scale as big as possible. But we have our width to be one hundred vh, and heights to be. 100 VH. No, this is view width. This is viewport height. Okay. Um, if this, okay, looking good. Um, I probably will need some styles um, to make my, to remove away the padding from the body or margin from the body. Um, so I'm thinking we add some styles. We're going to have some CSS that's like a global CSS. Here, um, like styles dot global CSS. This body to be margin zero. Obviously, you probably can include some of like your normalized CSS, like normalized CSS to make everything to be normalized. I think most of this, if you are targeting most of these uh, modern browsers, maybe you don't really need normalized CSS anymore because most browsers probably are quite standard nowadays. Um, but you can set some like reset. Maybe it's like a reset CSS where you reset some of this um, styles or set some of this um, styles to be, I, I, I actually, I haven't really used, uh, Really, really look into both of them. I don't really know what's the difference. Uh, but I guess it's like some of those like starter CSS where you can set some of the basic defaults to so that you can have good defaults across all browsers and then you can start your styles uh, easily. Um, over here, I have my body margin to be zero. Then I need to also include this CSS, right? Here I can have link rel style sheet and then source no href is this global CSS see what we have yep over here whatever is in a static folder will be sorry whatever is in the static folder will be available for you um, directly like here like global.css Right, whatever you write will be av directly available, and I believe, I'm guessing that um, probably if it's in the static, uh, if it's over here, then in a static folder, then probably Vits may not watch it and do like hot reload. I'm not quite sure, uh, but anyway, this is how you can add um, files or anything that is like globally available. And actually, yeah. Um, let's let's actually let's let's try that. <laughs> Sorry, 
there's too many things in my mind. So let me try to speak up one by one, right? So I think first thing is that having you can have files in a static folders and then you can access it from anywhere in your code because it's available in directly in this route. So it's not part of this routes, but it's available in this root slash thing and then like the file name. Right, so same thing as your favicon or PNG file, like all these are available directly in the root path, right? So the next thing is that uh, you can come over here in the app.html. This is the template of your, of the, this is the template for Svelte Kit. Um, so you probably should not touch this Svelte Kit head and Svelte Kit body where Svelte Kit will use this template and then injects the head and body when it does the server-side rendering. So you can keep these two intact and you can add as many meta tags and like the base meta tags or anything that you like over here because this is part of a template. But if you want to inject meta tags based on different routes, then you can use the Svelte Head uh, elements in your components, then that, that will be part of the Svelte Kit Head. Right, so whatever I add here, this will be available for the entire, um, uh, everywhere, every route, right? If you want the route specific, then maybe use a Svelte head instead. So the next thing I was talking about is, I'm not really sure whether this is, whether I change something over here, whether Svelte, uh, whether Vit will watch this file content. So if I try to say font size, let me open it on the side. If I say font size to be, 300 pixels. I save this. See, I saved this, but this is not refreshing. Or this is not hot reloading. If I refresh, then it's it's huge, right? So basically, I think it is not watching any content in this static folder. Um, maybe I could add it as part of the layout. Um, then it will be basic. Then it will be available for everywhere, right? So I can add a layout file. And I'm really, really not up to date on how you can create a, a layout file. So anyone wants to help me out or I will just start to search for how I create a layout file over here. Ah, okay, layout.svelte. So it's this plus symbol again. I go to my routes folder and then layout.svelte. So this will be my layout, right? And let me, so I can come over here and move my styles over here in this file instead. And now I can, I remove this. So I can come over here and import the CSS. Now this works slightly differently, right? Now I have my layout, right? This is my this is my layout, right? Um, so every routes will have this component uh, available uh, wrap around all your routes component because this is in the root route. Uh, of course, you can choose to not use this layout. You can have other layouts. Um, you can reset the layout and whatever it is, um, it's up to you. But if all of these routes are using this layout, then this this the code on this component will be executed, right? Uh, for every route, that's one. So number so now with this, um, every when in every route we will have this, uh, we will do this imports global CSS, right? So this way you are actually. Uh, saying that this component itself needs this file, right? You import this file. So sometimes when you import a certain files or certain modules, you import some, you import from some, uh, you import some of the exports that they have, right? Like XMG, and then you're trying to use XRG, right? But sometimes you don't need any exports from them because by the, the way of just importing them, Right, what it does is already create this file itself has some side effects. Right? Imagine you have a module that says window.xxx equals to 
some function, right? The means of just importing this module itself will already have effects, the side effects itself by like declaring some values on the window, right? So you may not need anything. You may not need to import and export from this module, but the but just the act of importing it will have a side effect, right? And what's the side effect of importing a CSS modules? In, in VIT, this is handled by default. You don't have to do anything. When you're importing a CSS modules, then these CSS files will be uh, will be downloaded or imported um, at in for you in 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 the runtime, right? So, uh, doing this alone will not do anything in will not do anything in the server side rendering. But on the client side rendering, this will basically download this file, uh, this this CSS files for you and make it available for you um, in in the runtime, right? At this CSS file into the head and and you have and then you can see the styles applied right so doing this uh, this is part of this import chain and now vit kind of since i already mentioned that vit will handle this for you which also means that vit will watch this file for you so if you come over here and try to maybe remove something then this um, there's a hot reloading happening for this css file and all the styles that you add uh whoops what did I just do? No. All this file that you just add uh, will immediately have effect. Right? So here, if I say font size is 16 pixels, then all of them will, like, 20, 26 pixels, then all of them will immediately have an effect uh, on your, uh, will be hot reloaded immediately. Right? So here, I just keep my original font size. Um, here now, I have three sections. Um, I think my bottom part is a bit too high, so let's let's change that a bit, right? Uh, this is gonna be fifty pixels, right? Just about right. This is maybe hundred fifty. Sounds about right. Uh, maybe less. I can see. Uh, I'm zooming at. Wait, this is zooming at two hundred. I mean, just zoom roughly, and compare left to right. I think we roughly get it, right? The the size and everything seems to be about right. So the thing about grid, good great thing about grid is that you can have grid templates uh, areas that you can um, specify the name for each grid area, right? So here I have one column and then two rows, which means that my grid template areas I can have. Um, I can have three different names over here. Um, one is the top bar, one is the sheet, uh, and then the bottom bar. Right. I hope I write it correctly. Uh, no complaints means it's correct. Now with that, I can tell uh, with a, I can go to each of the elements over here and tell which area it belongs to. Right. So this belongs to the top bar. This belongs to the sheet, and this belongs to the bottom bar. Okay, I mean, no difference, right? But this is because by default, it it will tries to put the things when you have grid layout. It will tries to put the children one by one, uh, from left to right, from top to bottom, into each grid cell. Um, but you can actually reverse this order. Then by default, if you don't have any grid areas, then you add the bottom bar first and then the sheets and the top bar. Right? But if you try to come back and here, you don't see the difference because we have already specified the area. Right? If I don't have this area, then it's... Oops. If I don't have this area, then it's like bottom bar, sheet, and top bar. Right? It depends on which comes first and then it will assign the cell from left to right, from top to bottom, right? So here, if I specify areas, then I can say, no, doesn't really matter on how I have it in my HTML, you always put them in the right area. And great thing about area is that if you have multiple columns, multiple rows, then you can actually decide um, which, if, if you want to have an area that spans across multiple cells, then you can 
name those cells as like like maybe you have two columns then top bar top bar but then shit maybe you only have one side and then shit and x and then bottom bar and if you have something like this where you have two column system then this is still the area where you can try to fill up then your shit will only fills up one because there's another area called x that it so you have you try to come over here and turn turn on the grid you see that this is a two by three table grid cell and then your shit will only be one side right so um yep this is about the shit bottom this is about the grid css grid now we have this now the next thing is probably we will have um components right i'm going to create components for the top bar um the the sheet and the bottom bar i guess you've heard this um this reasoning on and on a, a few times when especially when we in, uh introduced like the plus page felt is that you can now creates components within this folder and you don't have to worry that this is part of the, the routes because you can never go to say a bottom bar this is not a route that we will create um, so previously you probably have to rename it with an underscore um, underscore bottom bar instead of bottom bar to make it not part of a route now you can just name it as as your routes and Usually a page will have more components than rather than components, uh, more routes than a, um, you, you like, you probably will have more components than being used in a page rather than having multiple page using like the same component kind of, um, because if you have this one route is one folder, then I mean, you only have one routes, right? And you have multiple components using uh, the routes using the multiple components. Then this way with this plus sign, it's kind of like going on, on the top because uh, when, when VS Code saw that the plus symbol is always on top and then uh, it's clear for you to find that the page routes, right? So I guess maybe you, this is one of this, uh, one of the arguments that has been saying along with, or with these changes, but enough with that. I, to be honest, I don't really care. I think as long as there's a clear convention on how things is being done, um, I'm happily to follow because I mean, just want to make things work, All right? So here I have my sheet top bar, bottom bar. Um, so a uh, great heap from script raccoon. Yes, should use semantic tags. Header, menu, uh, main, and footer. Yes, we should do some semantics uh, over here. Um, this is probably a section. I'm not really sure. Or is, does it matter? Um, yeah, tell me. I'm, I'm actually not really that good about semantic text. Uh, I think this should be a main, and then this should be a part of a header. It called header. A nav, no, I'm not sure. Footer, everything looks. I mean, to to us with good eyes, we can tell everything looks the same. But for people that relies on, uh, maybe accessibility screen readers, or maybe for Google bots to analyze your your page, it's easier for them to basically figure out. I mean, semantic text is here to allow them to figure out which part is the main content, which part is actually the, the header and footer so that when using screen reader or other tools, or they will quickly able to narrow down to look at just the main content. Yeah, this is something that I also have to constantly learn about and figure um, along the way. All right, so here, um, my, let's see, I need to import these three components and then include them, right? Import sheet from sheet, alt, um, the top bar and the bottom bar. 
uh, yeah, you probably will see like a lot of this kind of refactoring along the way. This is this is this is real life. You probably will have to. I mean, once in a while you realize, okay, I paid file too much, and I mean this file is getting longer and bigger, and then I probably will have to. We'll probably will have to uh, refactor a bit and make it uh, reorganize the components so that it is at its it is at uh, it's more readable and more manageable. Um, now I'm losing my styles, so I'm going to copy those styles out as well. Or uh, maybe it doesn't really matter. We've seen how um, how we whoops. You've seen the layout, so I think over here now. So great thing about having great thing about having like refactor into its own file uh, or in its own component is that actually previously we need to have if it's all div, um, we will have if it's all div in this main uh, main page routes or main component, like a bigger component or parent component, if you have all the divs for each of them, then you have to add class names to target a specific um, divs because you have all, all of them are divs and you can't really differentiate them. But I find that once you move into an own component, of course, component itself has slightly overhead because I'm then just having just an element. But if you have more logics and you 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 decided that, okay, it's time to move in the components. One great thing about moving them in the component is that now this is the only divs that you see, right? This outer div, probably. Then in that case, you don't even need to have a class. You can target that elements directly because this is the only elements that you have, right? Sometimes you have div, but you have a lot of um, state logics and stuff. Then, yeah, then this way, it's, it's a simpler um, CSS. By means of simpler, what I means, what I'm trying to say is that I don't have to figure, I don't have to break my head to figure out what's a class name, right? Naming things are so hard, I, I don't want to think about class names. Then this is great because you don't have to come out with a class name. You can just target the element itself. Um, so here for top bar, I why did I copy this style? So for top bar, yeah, I need to copy this. Top bar, uh, again, we can remove this and make it a header. A bottom bar, and then for sheets, same thing as well. I guess we are going to call it main and remove the CSS class name. Okay, so now back to square one, but we have components. Now we just focus on a sheet component right now. Um, so make, to make this thing, um, I'm guessing it's like multiple cells, um, multiple cells that are like text, div text area ish. So I'm probably going to create um, components, um, right? Call a cell component. So this cell, I'm going to. I'm going to use maybe a, a span for now. Maybe a div. Okay, I think probably it's just a div. Um, and this div, whoops. This div, what I'm going to have is that at some border, right? So, so that I can see, I can tell the cell. So border, whoops, div. Border is going to be one pixel solid. Gray. Um, now in a sheets, what I can have is I will have multiple cells. So script import cell. And now I can look through and have all the cells. So how many cells should I need? Uh, okay, so by default it's a thousand. To, I don't know what's this, Zach, right? So it's like 25 times a thousand. I mean, why not? Let's try and do that. Uh, 
So here I have in my main, I'm going to go for each. Um, look through 25 times um, 7. Um, and I think each cell should be given some sort of um, ID. Right? So exports let cell. Maybe, it's, maybe for now, I'm going to call a value and put that value into the div, right? Um, yeah, something like this. I, I don't know. So the length is TypeScript, and I can say this is maybe like a string. Okay. Um, okay. So let's look through the cells. So here we probably will need to look through an array. Um, or you could use this hack. Um, so it's anything like an array uh, or actually anything with a length property. So here, length is equals to um, five. Wait, 26 characters, 26. Each array as item. Um, so item in this case probably be undefined because this is not really an array. The item value is undefined, but I have my index over here. Let's call this column. And I'm gonna each true again each length of thousand. As again, I don't really care. Let's call underscore as whoops row. And now I can have my cell and then the value probably I'm gonna call um call whoops column dash row. No, let's save this and there we go. We have a thousand, 25 times a thousand cells over here. Um, I mean, in Google Sheet, this is, this is, um, the it's it starts from one right so the number of rows starts from run, run one so maybe let's um, the row index equals to row plus one so let's define this constant over here and then call this this one and for column i think it's uh column index equals um column name itself actually alphabets right so it's something like a A plus column. Does it work? I, I don't think it works. Um, or rather, let's let's see. Uh, from char code, right? So uh, string from char, is it? Oh man, JavaScript from char code. Yeah, from char code. I'm not sure why. VS code is not hinting me for that. Uh, from a char code, and then we need to know the code for the alphabets. Right? So I I don't really need to know or don't have to remember that A is actually a char code for uh, the char code for A is actually sixty five. Um, I can say two char code. Wait, sorry, char code at Zero, and I can I can actually get the char code from this string, from this the first character of the string. Then this will tell me that the char code value of a is probably sixty five, and then I plus the column index. So this gives me the first is sixty five, sixty six, sixty seven, and then it turns that back into the character, the character code. So here, um, with my column name, we call it here then I think this has a ton of um ton of uh cells that it takes really hard to hot reload. Um maybe we should cut down the number of cells. Uh maybe the number of rows is maybe let's just keep to 50, right? I don't think we can even fit 50 in within a screen. Um, now it's better. I think it's, it's refreshing fast, faster now. 
So now with this, we are going to use the grid layout again to basically align, uh, lay out our, our sheets, right? Um, so here, I now, I can actually define this as variable and refactor this, like say extract, extract, refactor, no, can't really do this. But anyway, I can say number of columns, number of columns equals 26, number of rows is equals to 50. Make this a variable. And the reason of doing that as a variable is because I can actually define um, uh, the grid template based on this um, the number of columns and rows that I have. Right. So here I'm gonna I can come over here and say um, the what's that grid template rows is equals to uh, grid template rows is of rows. It depends on number of rows, right? So this is the repeat. What's the height for a cell? Maybe like twenty pixel. I need to make this a JavaScript so normal string. Here I get number of rows. And, and I can have my grid template columns also based on based on this number of columns. Being the column is wider, so maybe I'm just gonna make one fractional and let the width or the heights to decide. Let's save this. And no effect well, because we are not using the grid. So style uh, display grid. Right. Is it working now? Is it the grid? I'm having uh, uh, grid, grid template rows. Uh, what is going wrong over here? Um, Grid template rows, grid template rows. As you could not call grid template rows. Uh, wait, let me look at it. In my, over here, grid template rows. Okay, probably I have my CSS wrong. So grid template rows. Repeat, you call repeat. Oh. Grid template rows, repeat. Okay, you write repeat number of times before you put the unit. Okay, okay, I got it the other way around. So here, let me let me close everything else first. I think I have too many things open. So it's the other way around. So here. Save this. Okay, now it's, I think it's better. We have everything over here. Um, some characters are a bit too big. It's okay. Uh, let's zoom out a bit. We have our grids created using CSS. So, um, oh yes. Ah, good tip from Script Raccoon again. Yes, so in if you are doing something like this, you can actually do a string interpolation with expressions right you can have expressions everywhere um i guess this would work as well right you don't have to turn it into javascript to make it um yeah good tip i mean so this is more like you treat normal ex expression uh, attribute value as normal text in, in in like what you have over here, but you can also have expressions, right? So you can have expressions inside attributes as well. So here, you use attributes, uh, use expressions in Svelte, to, and then let Svelte to do the string interpolate, uh, to to basically build this up, uh, rather than having the whole thing as JavaScript, and then use the uh, template literals. Uh, if you ask me, is there a difference? Um, actually, no, there's not really much a difference. Uh, Svelte actually will handle both the same way. Uh, we'll actually convert that into a, 
uh, temple literals as well. So in terms of the final JavaScript that you write, there's not much difference. You know, so how you write it is more of a personal preference. Right? Speaking of personal preference, um, not really a big fan of having multiple styles over here. Uh, actually, it's it's really depending on you, right? So you, I mean, since we already have a CSS targeting main, then we can have grid uh, display grids over here as well, right? We don't have to have a style attribute. This is really personal preference. Um, I mean, this personal preference will actually have impact on how you what in, in terms of the actual output. Right, so having it in in the style attribute, then it will add it as part of like the style attribute. In you will use the style to add it in. So in your final, if you inspect the DOM, you see it in inside your style attribute. But having it over here in your CSS in a style block, what it does is that it will be part of the CSS. So you you don't find it in in your DOM attribute, uh, DOM element. If you look at the DOM, inspect it, you don't find it but it's applied as a CSS uh, file. So it's available for you separately in the CSS files rather as part of the um, a JavaScript file, right? Because if you have it in style attribute, you need the JavaScript to add it into your style attribute. Then the, the style itself is part of the JavaScript. But here, the style itself is part of the CSS, right? So um, personal preference, uh, like whether it really affects much of your code, I, I can't really tell, but it's mainly a personal preference and I like like to clip my keep my elements cleaner um, over here and then yeah, uh, have it here it's it's um, and have it as part of the uh, have it have the styles in the style block, right? And speaking of which, I could also have this too part of my CSS as well. and I can actually. Define CSS variables instead of having passing like um, whole, making the whole style. I can actually keep styles to where my personal preference again. I have my styles at where my styles would be, and here. So here I just only pass in 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 the elements. I only tell like I only tell the I can I only specify like what's the number of columns, what's the number of rows. Um, so nothing specific. Nothing specific. Nothing specific to the... Sorry, nothing specific to CSS styles. And I keep styles at where it is. So over here, I will say rows. Right, this variable called rows bar columns. So I keep my styles concern right here i have no idea whether i'm using a display grid display flex whatever it is i don't know i don't really see it from these elements and i keep all the styles at where it is where i specify everything in one place where i have like grids with template rows and columns and everything related to styles in the style block right so this would again we are doing like refactoring but this would still behave the same um nothing has changed so far Right, so with all the cells that we have now, we probably want to do something like clicking in, uh, selecting which cell is active, right? Um, so I guess we can keep track of that uh, active cell. And we can keep track of in terms of the um, the the column, the row. So let me define as, as so this is like column is like number, whoops, row is number or oh, no. So by default, there's no active cell, then everything is now. Wait, did I write something wrong? Oh yeah, blank equals yes. <laughs> Right, I can have an active cell, and then within the cell itself, um, and then probably um, when I click on the cell, I can specify which cell is active. And I can also tell, like, is this cell an active cell by saying that active 
equals to um, column equals to my column and active cell dot row row equals to row. Um, so active is actually a boolean. If equals to boolean. Now if it's active, then class, I can add this class active over here. And if it's active, then border color will be blue or blue violet, just to be interesting. Right? But we have not yet make decide which cells to be active, right? So if we have, say, this column is one and row is five, then hello, is it not working? Ah, man, why is it always not working? Um, active column, active cell, column, column, cell, row. Um, let's see what's wrong. The color. Um, should be this one, I think, inspect. Uh, let, let me make it like zero, zero, so that it's clear to me like the first cell is going to be if, and I have active class, I have the border color. It's just that, okay, somehow, or because of, ah, uh, okay. Just let me refresh this. Um, somehow the active comes after border. No, comes before. So, huh. This is more specific, but border color is not in effect. Okay. Um, interesting. Do it this way. I have active. Isn't this more specific? But it's not adding the class. It's not. It's not giving the style that I would want it to be. Um. Hmm. Why? Border color. Hmm. This is interesting. I'm not really sure what's wrong over here. Border with two pixel. Oh, okay, okay. I think it's is it is working. It is working. It's just that it's too small that I can't really tell. Um. So this one, let's do a light gray instead of the normal gray then now it's more obvious and let's make the border width to be also wider like say two pixel then it is much much obvious that yeah this is selected so nothing's wrong it's just bad eyesight <laughs> my god okay so so now we have active cell um you see that this is kind of ugly wait let me Thing, one thing at a time. Okay, so we need. We were saying that clicking on a cell should make something active, right? So here we should, um, uh, maybe have some sort of events that's coming out. Say like on select from the cell, right? So we don't have this yet, right? This is more like thinking about the APIs of the cell, like how you would think that it it makes sense. To, to write uh, the cell and then we implement it, right? So usually this is how I write code. I will write in a way that sometimes I will just pluck things from the air to write in a way that I find it makes sense to me, right? For example, um, cell, maybe I have some sort of like an event that uh, on select will give me, um, maybe like a deep, uh, will, will tell me that this cell is selected. And then with that, I can maybe set active cell equals to say column and row, right? Because based on the current cell and current row, right? But of course, right now, there's no on select at all, right? I have to implement it, right? So now, how to implement a custom event? Well, you can't import 
this um, from Svelte. You can import the create event dispatcher from Svelte. So first, most important thing is you need to get the dispatcher first, right? Create event dispatcher. With that, you can dispatch events, like custom events like select and stuff like that. Right? So to, to dispatch events, I can use the on click since we are going to handle it when we're clicking on a cell. So on click will dispatch, say, the select event. Oh, spelling error, right? Dispatch event. Uh, so now if I click on the cell, then I will dispatch the select event. And now you can see the correct cell is being selected. Um, well, Sukri Raccoon, you have been giving me a lot of good ideas over here, right? Um, yes, we don't really need... Um, if you want to have this um, class to be... Um, uh, to just apply the class to make the cell, um, uh, to make the cell, to make the cell border um, having a different border, then probably this will mean um, probably this will mean that uh, I I don't really need JavaScript for it, right? Because I can maybe add use some pseudo class to make this works, right? Yes, you're right. Exactly, you are. You're totally right. We don't really need JavaScript when we don't really need it yet. Uh, but I'm thinking about probably in future, I also have to show um, over here, right? This is the, the cell selected. So I still need to, I'm still thinking that I probably will have to still store it somewhere so that I can display it here, right? And also I can change it like this value and then I will select a different value over here, right? So... Um, which means that, yeah, I will probably will eventually will need to put it in some sort of a variable somewhere. Um, so yeah, but you're right. Uh, if we don't really need it, if this is just what we need to implement, then maybe we don't really need to write JavaScript uh, uh, and use CSS to do it for us. Okay, so um, have you been seeing here that I have. I think something is kind of not quite right in terms of the the layouts. Um, I mean, everything fits in the the grids, but I mean, A goes all the way to 26 and then starts with this again. So it feels like the number of rows and number of the row and the column seems to be going the other way around. Right, so we have number of columns is 26, number of rows is 50, column is where we get the name, and then row is where we get the value, right? But then when we put our cell, we kind of put it in the wrong cell, right? Because we keep, we are, um, yeah, I think the cell is not in the right place. Right, so here we can actually add style. Um, say for example, I think for the cell itself, we can have um, passing the row and the index, a row and the column. And here we also know what's our Whoops. We also know what is our row number and our column. With that, we can actually set some styles over here. Like so this is the row and column. And here we can have um style. Here we can have the grid row equals to var row and grid column goes to column. 
and I think that the we need to plus one right, somewhere. We need to plus one because the row and column starts with zero index, but the value itself. But the grid row and grid column is starting from one. So we just plus one so that everything starts at the right place, right? Um, so for, let me look at the chat so far. So I can show it up, right? So from mirror, um, so spell kit docs, right? Is it settled yet? I think it is update. It is being updated as, as, as recent as possible. I think the learning the tutorial content is not updated, but whatever it's written in the spell kit docs is actually referring to the latest uh, content, right? So. The things that I've just mentioned about, for example, the routing, the layouts, I think the it's it it, it this is the latest, right? Even like the recent like form actions over here, all these contents are latest. There's I I I not I don't think there's like old things, right? So with so this the the documentations and the spell kit um the source code is actually within the same repository. So it's actually update like the one MR that make changes to the, like breaking changes to the routing actually comes together with the, the docs itself. So that, yeah, I mean, the content itself is updated, but of course it's not like fully flesh out where maybe there are some details that are not mentioned, but it's what you see is, it's not outdated, right? Um, at least in terms of like the recent breaking changes. But if you are seeing something that's not quite right, then feel free to raise an issue and yeah, let's let's improve the docs together. And but in terms of the tutorials over here, I don't think we have updated tutorials. Um so those are things are in progress and needs time to polish them up. Right? Yeah, I should actually focus like cool ideas. Like for example, like Script Raccoon has this great idea that we can use on focus and then use on focus to dispatch um, data, right? We can use on focus to um, focus on to to know like which inputs is in which is in focus. Use the focus event instead, right? Yeah, great. So where are we? Right, we have selecting. We have the right cell at the right place. Um, it's just that I think when I do this, it feels sad because everything is collapsed. Um, uh, I think we really need to make um the rows of a certain width. So I think it's called a min. Right here, min. Oh uh, no, max of. Oh, sorry. This is column, right? This is row. This is column. Max of fifty pixel. Does that work? I'm not really sure about CSS. Um, it does not break, which means probably it's still working. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Right. Uh, is it max or min? Wait, what is 50 pixels? How big is 50 pixels? I think maybe this is 20 pixel. No. Max, is it? Um, I've been talking to myself now, but okay, I'm trying to figure out CSS grid min max. Bye, Sarah. Um, thanks. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, oh, min max. Okay, greater min max. Min max. Okay, it's called min max so that it's uh, size range greater or equal to min. Size range. Min max. Okay. Um, so I guess we should go for min max. 
right here um is it wider it's still less than 50 um I think it's it's. I, once I start this, I need to figure this out. Or else you're not. Uh, main element has hundred, so the cell's not getting wider. Yes. Yeah, you are right. I was thinking whether I can still force it to be wider, but okay, maybe that's not working. So here, how this works in Google Sheet is that it's scrollable. Right? There's a there's a fixed height and width in the main and it's scrollable. So I, I guess we'll have to make it scrollable. Um let's see if we just throw in overflow scroll. I I, I doubt it will work. Um right, it's it's not it's it's working in one direction, not the other direction. So I guess this this calls for us to Make another div. Um, another so so this div is the one that is having all the having the display grids, and the size itself can can grow in any way it likes. Like for example, this is maybe like. I don't even need to specify a fractional. I can say this is going to be 100 pixel wide. And now I have, I'm back to scrollable panes over here. Whoops. Right, I can scroll now. Um, yeah, so I guess to solve it, I need to make it scrollable. And by scrolling, you probably will miss out the where, like, what is the oh you're right maybe i should change the order yeah i'm i'm really not familiar with this uh pixel one fr with, with this css but here ah okay so the 50 should be the minimum right the max is the the one fractional unit. Ah, okay, okay. I, I guess, yeah, I guess that, that makes sense. So just now I was like, the minimum is the one fractional unit, maximum is 50. But then we are so cramped that it won't grow more than 50, right? Unless I have a super wide screen. So, yeah, so it should be the other way around where the minimum is 50 pixels and one fractional unit for um, the maximum, right? So you don't grow more than that. Yeah, makes sense. So, I mean, can still keep this. Um, at least it, it will make sense if we have, say, for example, three row, three columns. Now it, it's still. Uh, if I don't have the min max, then then if I just have like hundred pixel, then it will be just on the left, right? So it really depends on your your design. Right. If if this is okay for you, then it's okay. But we can also make it um. We can also make it like this, where it grows um, at a maximum of like one fractional unit. Everyone takes the same size, and then minimum is fifty pixels. So if it's too crowded, like six, then then at least everyone has a minimum of fifty pixels. Thank you. I think I learned even more. Um, I, I, I feel like I've learned more than you guys over here, right? What I'm doing here, maybe it's, um, yeah, maybe it's, it's simple to you. And I, I don't know. I, I feel like I've learned a lot not to just do this live stream. I like learn a lot in terms of the CSS and style from you guys. Thank you for all the comments and the, the, the advice over here, right? So um, uh, with this, with this cell, um, now the next thing is, I guess we need some sort of headers as well, right? So that could be maybe something with sticky. Um, yeah, it'll be tricky if we want to do like resizing in future. Um, but I think let's just make 
I think that will takes us another like whole two hours blocks. Like one of the weeks we will probably work on this. I, I guess this will be not not this will be interesting to see how it does. And I probably would need to do a little bit of light research on like how everyone is doing. I feel like this probably it uses a table layout, a display table instead of display grid. Uh, it could be display grid as well. Um, and then you base on the, and then you have a variable grid columns, right? Um, yeah. So here uh, we have our area. Then next thing is we need to have headers as well. So you we can have the um, header. Um, I'm gonna call header. Um, same thing, row, column. Um, I don't think you need active you need value. Probably we can pass in some value. Uh, row, column, class, active. Right, this will be our header. To make it different, we're gonna have some sort of background color light gray and the and the color i think let's leave it at this we have our header cell header cell okay and then um uh, i think we probably will need active because you will need to know which column and rows it is selecting right now right here and here with our header cell uh what we need uh, here is we're gonna create our header headers, right? So for each columns, I think we can create a new loop over here. For each column, we're gonna create oops, a new header and the and we have the row and the column, right? So I think it's a bit different, right? So maybe um, maybe we can have two different types of header. One is the row header, one is the column header. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, because the, the props is different, right? Column header takes in columns, row header takes in row. Um, uh, yeah, but it's, it's really up to you on how you want to organize your code of this way. So here we have my uh, column header and row header. Now I have all the the row. Uh, so this is, should be a row header. Um, so this is okay. This loops through column is column header, and then we pass in the column value. I guess it's just a column name. And then we also have the rows, row, number of rows. And here we have our row index. This row. Name is the row index. Uh, make it a string. better row header right so we have a column header row header they are somewhere in here um but they are not in the right grid right in the grid we probably will want them to be um we probably want them in the grid um let me think can we add sticky to grid? Not really sure, but let's try. Um, but I think the grid template rows will need to plus one over here instead of just number of plus one uh, instead of just number of rows because we have we have to accommodate the header and the 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 column, and then for the row header. Sorry, for the cell, I guess we need to accommodate for the plus two. Okay, which 
that it's 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 here. Now then you have space for the call the row uh header and stuff to put it in, right? Um I see that you can actually do a lot of ways to play with this. Um you can, of course, come in to the cell and say, okay, this is now plus two, because you know, based on the column value, row value, you know which, which um, uh, where you should be. But there's also, you can, so I can, and then I can come over to the row header and say that this is, this row header, right? The column is always one. And the row is depends on what row I am. Right? And, the, and the column header, the, Row is always one, and then the column is depending on where we are. Uh, this is probably plus two, right? We we could have something like this, and then we we base on the index, right? So if you look at the main class, the grid, we know this is one, two, three, four, five, and then everyone is like knowing where it is, it belongs to. Um, there's also a different. Uh, and maybe I'm thinking maybe another approach on doing this. I'm not sure whether it's a better way. Um, so I mean, might as well just share to you. Um, I mean, this this is what we're doing, right? Just to have, um, I mean, programming. There's no, there's always no right or wrong way of doing certain things, but it's more of like um, different approaches and figure out which one fits better. And I guess I I personally I like to share. All the different possible ways that you can do, and so that you can um, decide on your own, right? And and then I mean, having more possibility, having more alternatives, having more possibilities. I should look at the camera more. Having more possibilities and more alternatives is is good, so that you um, can weigh in the based on different scenarios. You can choose a different options because not there's always a trade-off and what is good for a certain scenario may be bad, not that great for another scenario and could be better for a, a different scenarios, right? So I'm thinking maybe instead of a template rows and columns, I mean, instead of like specifying grid column and grid row, maybe we can have a grid area and we can define grid template area somehow. But then over here, we can't really, can't really, um, Build this up, can we? Can we? I, I don't think we can build up uh, areas based on repeat, right? You have to have strings, right? Let me let me try. Uh, can I? I grid grid template area. Uh, repeat repeat five times. And this this is definitely not not possible. So we'll probably will have to build it up uh, with the um, with the styles over here. Um, so here, grid template areas. So this is one of the things that I I guess I'm contradicting myself now. Uh, Earlier on, I was saying like, oh, okay, I don't really like having. Um, styles over in littering over my elements, but now I'm kind of going back, but this is just something I'll explore and see. Um, maybe this is, this is, this way, maybe this works as well. I'm, I'm not really sure, but let's see. So here I can, I haven't really tried writing this like this. Is this even working? Um, grid. This is definitely not working. Um, let's see. Grid, grid template areas. I know that in over here you specify with like a new line, um, but I'm not really sure how you do it in the. In, in JavaScript, right, in, in terms of the string itself. Um, let's see, it's just none and this string. So I'm guessing uh, we can have something like this. 
Let's save this. Let's see whether it works. Okay, it works. So I have two areas now. I have, I have like A and B, but let me just build it up based on um, number of rows and number of columns that we have. Um, okay, I, I now immediately regretted that I was thinking of doing this. Um, but I mean, for the sake of just making it happen first um, and then we evaluate later, I'm going to write it out now. So here, I... My my the thing that I envision is that I'm gonna have um header one, header two, header three, header four. No, column header one, column header two. So we have this white space, right? So this is the X area, and then we have column header one, two, three, four, all the way. Whoops. And then we have um row header one, row header two. And then here, this is normal cell one, one dash one, one dash two, one dash three, one dash four. Right? And so I can, act, yep, something like that. So here I can build, build up this map. And then, um, and then I can specify my grid areas. Right, so to do that, um, I need to look through row by row, right? Because one row is one string. So um, uh, array, array. This is what this is. Column rows. Show the map. Next, um, I'm guessing I need to fill somewhere. I remember that if it's an empty array of empty objects, if you map it through, it is not going to map it through. I'm not quite sure, but um, but anyway, um, here we're gonna fill this up, right? Index equals to wait, what else I'm gonna sit through? Um, okay, so the first first row is actually relative. First row is actually all the column headers, right? So I can come over here, uh, do this again. Whoops. But here, of rows, no, number of columns, and then, I mean, the first one is X. Space and then a, uh, and then my, and then I return C H, I D X. Okay, so I guess we just make it zero base, much easier as well because everything else is zero base. Um, yeah, something like this. Okay. Um, and then I'm gonna fill up the rest, which is gonna look through number of rows. Uh, this is the row. And then I'm gonna, and for each row, I am going to return um, string, right? And here I have my row header row space. And then here I'm gonna again look through number of columns. I can immediately, now I'm immediately regretting why I'm doing this. It's, it's messy as hell. Um, but uh, let's just, just finish and see whether it works. Um, here I am going to, here I need to join by white space. Um, here I need to return the cell row first and then column, right? Okay. No particular reason why row first and column, but then this is need to remember later on when I specify the areas. Okay, now let's see. Um, if I have my... Uh, I think something goes wrong with this whole string. But here, 
um, definitely something wrong. Uh, map. Ah, uh, I need to map. Oh, don't join. Right space. Uh, join. Uh, okay. Let's 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 get this out and take a look at what we actually have. Console. Hold on. Okay. Uh okay, the, the quotes are not in the right place. The quotes should be in here. Right? Okay, so I need to change back here as well. Oh no. Here. Yeah, so the, I mean, okay, this is this is not good at all. This, I immediately regret. I think, yeah, we should use some table elements. And I and there's actually some table elements, like table header elements that can actually, I think it's called table columns. Um, column elements. This will actually control and define the column. We can have column groups and stuff that actually can control like um, you, you can actually separate the header and the row and all of them you specify which column it belongs to and then you can actually control the width from this column element itself um, which is which is yeah I think which is better than doing this but yeah, so you can use some JavaScript to build up the grid template areas. And later on, you specify, uh, we're wasting our time, but uh, here you can specify that this is, this is the grid area of, um, of the row. This is row header, right? Row var row so row header row header um yep something like this uh row header uh row and then I have to pass one wait do I have to plus one row header this is row header zero. I think it's just correct, I guess. Or maybe it's not working at all. Um yeah, I guess it's not working at all. Um grid area. There's no I oh wait. Do I row header zero? Yeah, this is this is not good at all. Specify row header zero. Wait, is it even? Is it even working? My God, no. Ah. Yeah, I can't really use a string over here just now because it's it's not really a string. It's more of like a variable, right? Um, so. Which means I would even have to fall back to do something like read area goes to RH row. Yeah. Which is even yucky that something that we were trying to avoid in the first place. So, um, at least you see, at least you kind of see like one of the alternatives, which is to use grid area to try to build this up. And then now you don't have to specify the row, you specify the grid area. You don't have to know 
uh, you have to pass two, but instead what you can do is you can have style grid area equals to cell row dash column, right? Uh, row dash column. And then you don't have to specify plus two. You don't have to know where it is. You can save this. And now we are using the grid area to basically define where this um, cell should belong, right? We don't have to know like, oh, okay, how many headers we have, like what's the offset and things like that, right? Although you can have that as part of a variables and that would also work in one way or another. But grid areas, right? I mean, grid areas is amazing until you probably create like some crazy grid <laughs> template areas like this, then maybe it's not really a good way of doing it. Anyway, let me revert a bit. Um, let me come out from here. Um, now we are using the normal um, this grid value. And I think in future, we probably will even try out doing the grid uh, using a table instead of a grid. Then maybe we don't even need to Yeah, maybe in, at that time, then probably we, yeah, we will also drop this thing all together, right? So anyway, we have this now, and now let's make this to wrap things up. I think we are going almost two hours now to wrap things up. We can make this the uh, position as a sticky. Wait, um, top. Yep, it is working. So we can have um column header as position E and top to be zero. And for row header is position sticky, but the left to be zero. Now you can have scrolling up and down. Um feels a bit weird. Why is it suddenly scroll past? Is it my viewport? Yeah. Yeah, we can scroll past and then have it in focus. And now I guess just to quickly wrap things up to make it feels like we are in good progress. We'll make sure that the header, they're all active as well when it's needed, right? So for example, this is um, uh, when the active cell is matching, right? When active cell column is column, or active cell row is row, then we make it active. And I mean, we still can't click on the cell to select everything, but at least we can say that um, over here, if, if um, class, um row header as in class active spot let active equals boolean um now select something at least you can see that this is active uh, the active ones are in gray right um Phew. Now I kind of know how long we need to do this thing. Um, I guess like in future, we will probably scope even down on what we are going to have. Um, within a, I, I will, I mean, this is the first week, uh, week, weekend hack, spelled weekend live stream. This is the first one. Uh, we will, that's why I, I didn't say what we are building. And now you know we are building a, like a Google Sheet kind of clone in Svelte. So next, uh, I will I will I will schedule the next stream um, next weekend. We will have this regular right the next weekend, and then we will probably will say like what we are going to work on. And immediately I can see the next thing I really 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 want to work on is to click on this, make it uh, click on any cell, make it like a text input where you can 
um, change something and then you type something and then that uh, so it switch between a inputs and a div because here you you it's not an input but once it's you double click in it becomes an input and can make changes to it and then um, hopefully we have enough time to also explore how we can make this like a derived uh, reactivity where you can change something like this right and probably the the way we're gonna do it is we will incrementally trying to improve along the way so um, now we are using display grid fair enough but as we go we will uh, probably in future we will expand it and then make it like a table column um, table elements right um, what I'm trying to say with that is that um, this is like a really really like realistic kind of an experiment uh, trying to work trying to build something over here rather than I, I don't really have a clear idea of a top down approach of okay this is what we should do and we're gonna break it like the top down kind of approach. Um, rather this is more of like a bottom up where we build small components and then we build it up and then at some point of time we'll probably will realize that this is ugly and we have to refactor and then we will restructure along the way, right? Which which is great for me because um which means that I don't have to prepare too so much. I mean I don't have to prepare so much for the live stream. And also it's good for me because which, which will mean that this stream will have this content, uh, will have definitely have a lot of content that you can work on because you know, Google Sheet, so many features, definitely all these things that we can work on over here. Um, but if you are here to like, really wants to um, listen to like an experienced Google Sheet developer to that, builds this thing and like list, learn about all the like learn about a summary of all the experience that they have learned then probably this is not what you're for uh this is probably the wrong place to come <laughs> but if you want to come along build together and then uh gain the experience together uh, and, and also share your advice I, I think i learned a lot over here with all the um uh with all the comments and messages as well um, then I guess um, this is the stream that you are looking for. And that's it for this week. I will see you in the next week, right? And next week probably will be in for the European buddies. It will be your time, right? And see you next week. Bye-bye.